running through shrinking habitats and into growing conflict with humans. The world's fastest land animal faces extinction. The numbers are continually declining. But some refuse to accept the loss of these animals. There's no need to kill cheetahs anymore. Using research, education, and innovative ideas to save vanishing cheetahs. phone calls from farmers to come out and pick up a cheetah that has been trapped. The farmer we're going to now has caught several cheetahs over the last few years. In many years of conflict with predator cats, Wolfgang Gasso shares the experience of most livestock farmers here in central Namibia. So we let us get over there with the crate and get a, you'll get a, a feel for it. Sometimes he loses an animal to a cheetah. Sometimes he wins a battle and a cheetah loses. We must take it a little bit back to open the gate here. Yes. Okay, open like that. Right. But, uh, Put these woods along the side. In the past, a captured cheetah like this would usually be shot or sold to a dealer and end its days in a zoo. He's a handsome cat. But now there's a far different outcome. Okay, are we ready? Like many farmers in this region, Gosso has agreed to cooperate with the Cheetah Conservation Fund to give this cat a pardon and another chance to survive. Snow. Yeah, it's just quick, huh? That's it. It's only one cheetah, but this is a critical part of an urgent strategy to save an endangered species. All right, cheetah, goodbye from me. <laughs> Nature built this cat for speed. Scientists say there's never been a land animal as fast as the cheetah. But even at 110 kilometers per hour, it's losing its race for survival. In 1900, there were more than 100,000 wild cheetahs on the planet, ranging across Africa, Asia, India, and the Middle East. But in the past 60 years, they've gone extinct in at least 15 countries. 30 years ago, the numbers were down to probably about 20,000. Today, they're probably less than 12,000. Lori Marker is founder of the Cheetah Conservation Fund. We lost the cheetah in India in the 50s, in the Middle East in the 70s. It's that recent. They were declared extinct in Russia in the later 80s. And the last of the Asian cheetahs now in Iran, maybe 50 cheetahs left. Remaining cheetahs now hold out in parts of Africa and Iran, magnificent animals that could soon vanish from the earth. At the Cheetah Conservation Fund Center, a 45,000 hectare demonstration farm, staff workers and volunteers feed captive cheetahs six days a week. Come on, come on! There are 15 female cheetahs in this large enclosure. Come, come, come! Several dozen cheetahs are kept on this farm. They're not considered suitable for releasing back into the wild. Some are injured and unable to hunt. Most were either orphaned or captured at an early age and never learned from their mothers how to hunt for food. 
they would probably not survive in the wild. On this farm, these cheetahs are kept in secure, fenced enclosures, well-fed and exercised, offering photo opportunities for visitors and serving as ambassadors for their kind. But caring for these captive cheetahs is only incidental to the main mission of the Cheetah Conservation Fund, to secure the long-term survival of cheetahs wherever they're found. Starting here in Namibia, with the world's largest population of wild cheetahs, some 3,000 of them, about a fifth of all those still left on the planet. What has happened to cheetahs in this country reflects their troubles across their range, continuing conflicts with humans defending their livestock from predators like cheetahs. Inside protected areas like parks and reserves, cheetahs suffer from competition with other large predators like lions and hyenas. The vast majority of cheetahs live outside protected areas, on farmlands where game species are the cheetah's prey but where an occasional meal of a goat or calf will bring retaliation from humans. When I moved here in 1991, the farmers were actually killing about eight to 900 cheetahs a year. That's what was reported. It's probably a lot more than that. And there was a lot of conflict. During the 1980s, Namibian farmers killed at least 7,000 cheetahs on their private lands, dropping the cheetah population here by half. You see here the prints of the nails. Outside the enclosure with 15 female cheetahs inside, tracks of a big male cheetah are often found. A male cheetah's territory can cover hundreds of square kilometers. And I'm going to mount this camera on the pole. Using scent marking trees as study sites, researchers set camera traps with motion and heat sensors to photograph cheetahs. Spot patterns identify individual animals, information essential to estimate cheetah numbers and density, and to reach an accurate estimate of the total population of cheetahs in Namibia. On the day after it was brought from the farm where it was captured, the wild cheetah is darted with a tranquilizer then taken into the research clinic for a full biomedical assessment. Hundreds of other wild cheetahs have been examined here in this clinic. In this case, the farmer and his visiting grandchildren were invited here to learn more about the animal he captured. From now on, this cheetah will be known as number 1502. It looks like a young male who's coming into his prime. The, yeah. the cat's in excellent health. An ID tag is clipped on the ear. A full set of body measurements are taken, as well as samples of blood, skin, and other tissues. And as with all male cheetahs, semen samples are also collected. These young males don't have very good sperm, so the quality of, and quantity of the sperm was great, which says that he is holding a territory and um, is coming into his prime for reproduction. No, that looks all right. Genetic problems are another threat to the cheetah's survival. Because of what scientists call a bottleneck in their evolution, cheetahs suffer from lack of genetic diversity, inbreeding that causes birth defects and reproductive problems. That is just amazing. He's a good guy. <laughs> Information gathered from sperm analysis goes to a global genome resource bank. Sperm cells are frozen and stored for future use. Insurance against unforeseen catastrophes, such as disease, that could be disastrous to the cheetah population. The Cheetah Conservation Fund doesn't practice captive breeding here. If I don't really want to have tame cheetahs. I don't want to have cheetahs that are living in an orphanage here. I want to have cheetahs living out in the wild. But there are captive breeding facilities elsewhere that provide cheetahs to zoological institutions and private buyers. About 10 percent of the world's cheetahs live in captivity, but experts say captive breeding has low reproductive success and high infant mortality, 
and cannot secure the long-term survival of this species. If cheetahs are to have a future on this planet, they must live and reproduce in the wild. But as human settlements spread and the cheetah's habitat shrinks, increasing competition with humans means more casualties for cheetahs and little hope for their future. We try to run them at least twice a week. It's to keep them in good health and, and obviously keep them fit. The cheetah is a very special animal. Here's this very, very vulnerable endangered species. If you look at the fragmented populations, and we already know the cheetah lacks genetic diversity. We can't fragment them much more. This incredibly fast animal is running out of time. I would say right about here is fine. Okay. Coming up. Here in Namibia, we've seen the recovery of the cheetah. Go, 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 go. What's being done in Namibia to show how humans and these wild cats can coexist on the same land? 